Hey, what's cooking? Today I'm going to show you all my best Warzone 2 settings that's going to allow you to have better performance. This is going to be a very quick video so that I can allow you all to get back to gaming. I'm going to be covering some of the key points that's going to help you with those better frames when it comes to your PC settings. So feel free to pause this video many times so that you can be able to catch every single detail that I have for my settings alone. So today for the Warzone settings, I'm going to be covering three topics. The first topic is going to be your frames. So you PC players, make sure to watch this all the way through. And especially at the end, because I have one special thing that you have to do outside the actual game itself. The second part is we're going to be covering audio because I know a lot of times the audio is broken in Warzone 2. So I'm going to be giving you all my best audio settings so you can be able to hear those footsteps and other things in the game a lot more clear. And the third, if you're a controller player, Make sure to watch the settings that I have for this if you're a run and gun kind of player such as myself because it's going to help you increase your KD and performance overall. If you happen to find any value at all in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. It does help out my channel a lot and I'm able to reach more amazing people such as yourselves. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and turn on those bell notifications so you can continue to see more of these upcoming videos. Let's get right into it. So when it comes to your graphics card, it doesn't matter what kind of graphics card you have, whether it's NVIDIA or AMD, I've used both for Warzone 2, and it's still going to be the same performance. I just want to be able to help you out as much as I can so that I can help you increase those frames so you can have better performance when it comes to the gameplay itself. Down below in the right hand corner, you can see how much VRAM usage I have, which is also known as your memory usage. The higher you have it, the more of a performance issue you're going to be having, let's just say. And the lower you have it, the more performance you're going to have. Pretty simple, right? So let's go ahead and break down the most important areas. And like I said, make sure you pause in certain areas because I'm going to be covering only specific places that's going to affect your VRAM the most. So in the display tab, I have the VSync for the menu and gameplay turned off because I'm not trying to limit and match my frame rates to my monitor. I'm trying to max out my frames as much as possible. That's going to help me get the best performance and it's going to help you get the best performance of your gameplay. In the quality tab section, we're under the upscaling and sharpening section. So I have it set to NVIDIA image scaling that's allowing me to have the best performance with the sharpening and images in the game itself. Oftentimes it used to be that fidelity used to be one of the best settings to help enhance the sharpening in images. But with the recent uploads, it doesn't give you that best performance anymore. As I drop down in this section, I have it set to native and I have the image scaling sharpness set to 40, which gives you that well rounded balance of actual images in the game itself. Now we're into the details and texture section right here. So the ones that are set to low are going to affect the VRAM usage the most and the ones that are set high do not affect the VRAM as much. So like I said, as I scroll down here, make sure you pause so you can be able to see all the settings so that it's at the lowest VRAM usage possible. But I want to cover the water quality part right here. So under water quality, I have it set to water caustics and wave wetness is because it gives you a lot better lighting when it comes to tracking enemies in the water. So let's just say, for example, whatever game mode you're in, you see an enemy that dive into the water and you can't see them. It's because it has more of a reflection and it allows me to see more shadows and shapes of the enemy swimming. So that's why oftentimes players think I'm cheating when I'm shooting them through the water. It's because I'm able to track them with this setting on because of the quality of the light. Before we tap over to the view section, I just want to be able to give you the rest of the settings for the shadow lighting and the pulse processing effects as well. There's only one part I want to cover in the view section, which is going to be the ADS field of view. And I have it set to affected. The reason is, is because that when it comes to magnification levels, that's less than 3.25. That's going to be iron sights and your red dots. You don't zoom in as far and it allows you to see more of a wider view behind enemies that you're fighting and allows you to move on from one target to the next a lot more clean. So make sure that this is set to affected, especially if you want to increase that KD. So I want to show you one little bonus tip before we move on to audio settings. So in the interface section, scroll all the way down till you reach the center dot and center dot scale section because you're able to have a little center dot right in the middle. It allows you to help you with your centering, especially if you're trying to get better at the game. Turn this on. I have it set to larger. It helps me with my centering and I'm able to move from one target to next and be able to know where those iron sights or any zoom optic scope that I have on enemy targets. For the audio settings, I'm going to keep it real simple. I have it set to headphone based boost. It's because I tried all the other settings in there and this gives me the best performance. It kind of depends on your headphones. I'm using a very old version of the HyperX. I know some people use Astros, all personal preference, 
but I'm able to hear high and low end frequencies of enemy footsteps along with other things around me and it gives me a better advantage when it comes to the audio itself. Here's the master volume that I have and these are settings that gives you the best performance for you to be able to hear what's going on in the game. Now we're in the last section which is going to be the controller settings for those controller players. This is going to be the last part in the game before I show you one little tip for those PC players outside the game. So make sure to stay tuned for that. The only section in this area I want to be able to show you is the automatic sprint. If you're going to be a running gunner or just want to help with your movements in general, I have it set to automatic attack sprint. It allows me to go from a moving forward. I'm able to sprint right away so that I can be able to go from one part of the map to the next along with maybe moving to cover. Whatever the case may be, it just allows you to sprint a lot quicker than the other settings that you have. Now we're over into the advanced section on the controller settings and for the aim assist type I have it set to default. It kind of depends. I've gone from black ops to default kind of back and forth but with season five I felt like default gives me a better sticky aim assist compared to black ops. Play around with it see which one feels best for you that allows you to give you the best performance. In the aiming category I have it set to dynamic it's because I'm able to move from one target to next a lot more accurately compared to the other settings I've tried. Um, play around with it, like I said, see which one's going to feel best for you, as well as the AD, ADS sensitivity multiplayer focus. I have it lower because I'm able to move a little bit slower when I'm aiming and I'm not moving all over the place so I can have better centering. And here's my sensitivity per zoom. Play around with it, see which one's going to be best for you, what's going to be able to help you with your centering and have you focus on enemy targets a lot more accurately. As I scroll down here, still in the advanced tab, uh, I don't have gyro behavior on because I'm always kind of moving my controller here and there. When you have that on, when you move your controller up and down, it allows you to move the aiming up and down. So I don't have that on there. I never actually had it on there. This was like a new feature that they add in Warzone 2. But the last part I want to show you is the movement behaviors. This is going to be very important, especially if you're going to be a run and gun player. In the movement behaviors for the tackle sprint behavior, I have it on single tap sprint, which works hand in hand with the tack sprint on that we have in the controller settings tab. I'm able to press the uh, sprint button right away and be able to go from one area to the next constantly moving so that it allows you to get in those enemy gunfights a lot quicker. The last part I want to show you is the invert slide and dive behavior. That's because I have it set to inverted. The reason is I don't slide as much when it comes to Warzone 2, because of the sliding, there's a delay. So I'm always diving, especially diving into cover, diving and pulling my parachute from one building to next so that I can be able to move around the map a lot faster. So play around with it, get used to the tapping to dive. It may change during Warzone 3, which I will do another settings video once we are able to get slide canceling back again. Then I just want to show you the rest of the advanced section of my settings alone. Maybe it's going to be able to help you as well. And I want to be able to show you this before we get into the last key feature for PC players only that's going to help you whether you're NVIDIA or AMD. Now with the VRAM usage being so low, the actual quality and the actual picture itself isn't going to be the best. So that's where we're going to go into the NVIDIA control panel. Otherwise, if you're an AMD player, you want to do AMD adrenaline performance. But for NVIDIA players, I'm going into the NVIDIA control panel and we're going to go into adjust desktop color settings. And the last part you want to do is set the digital vibrance all the way up to 100 so that the saturation in the game is a lot more clear. With these new settings, I hope that you're able to have better performance when it comes to your frames, your audio, and if you're a controller player, more advanced movements. If I miss anything though, please write them in the comments below and I'll get back to you relatively quick. Other than that, I hope that this was short and sweet so that you're able to have better performance in the games. Other than that, I'll catch you all later in these lobbies. GG's.